What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie back with another deep dive into the world of Linux and all things tech. And today we're rolling up our sleeves and jumping into something super cool and that's setting up Home Assistant on Proxmox using the Proxmox VE helper scripts. And if you're like me, you love when things get automated and that's exactly what these scripts are all about. So whether you're new to Proxmox or you're looking to get a better handle on Home Assistant, stick around because I'm going to show you guys how to make this whole process way easier. Trust me, you don't want to miss this one. All right, so before we get our hands dirty, let's talk a bit about the Proxmox VE helper scripts. They're like the Swiss Army knife for Proxmox users. Now, Proxmox itself is already a powerhouse when it comes to virtualization, but these scripts take it to the next level. We're going to be focusing in on one script in particular, and that is for Home Assistant. And you have a couple different options here. As you can see, you have the Home Assistant Container LXC. So you can set up containers or the core LXC, and then also Home Assistant. I'm gonna focus in on this script right here. And so let's click on it right fast, and this will give you a little bit of the information of the script. And as you can see, this script automates the process of creating a virtual machine using the official KVM QCOW2 this image provided by the Home Assistant team. So it's getting it directly from the Home Assistant website. And it involves finding, downloading, and extracting the image, defining user the settings, importing and attaching the disk, setting the boot order, and storing the virtual machine. And one cool thing about it, it supports various storage types and does not involve any hidden installations. And that's one thing I'm excited for them to say. If you go over to the GitHub page for it, let me scroll up right fast. Well, if you click on guides, that'll take you, it'll open up another tab and you can go over to the actual GitHub page for the scripts. And that's one of the things they specify here, be cautious of copycats. So make sure you only trust the information from the helper-scripts.com, which I don't have that one open, but also the ttech github.io proxmox. And that is this one that I already have open. And of course I'll have these links down in the description of the video so you can find it. But this redirects that other domain helper scripts.com it redirects over to the ttech so make sure you get it from the right repository okay so with that being said let's get to the fun part and install home assistant hey y'all josh here from keep it techie real quick let's talk about rocky linux this distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid enterprise ready linux solution it all started after red hat dropped CentOS, and gregory kurtzer the og co-founder of CentOS brought us Rocky Linux as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community-driven, open-source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Linux 8.10 is out now, giving you that enterprise-grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full-on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you want to keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community, for the community, and it's here to stay. Stay techy, y'all. So I'm connected to my server. What you want to do is select the server, whatever you named your server up here at the top under data center, and then go over to shell. And so open up the shell to allow you to get into the main system. Now let's switch back over to the helper script. And all you have to do is copy this right here. And this will run the home assistant OS .sha. So let's switch back over to Proxmox and paste this in there. Boom. And then go on and run it. And as you can see, it'll pull up a page basically saying this will create a new home assistant OS VM. And do you want to proceed? And you just basically click yes. Now the script will then ask you if you want to use the default settings or go to advanced. Now, if you're just getting started, I recommend going with the default settings. It sets up your VM with four gigabits of RAM, 32 gigabits of storage, as well as two virtual CPU cores. But if you're feeling a little adventurous, you can go down and select the advanced. And this will allow you to tweak things like the OS version, the host name, the VM machine ID, if you want to, as well as the CPU cores and the RAM settings. It's a bit like choosing your own adventure, but with fewer dragons or so. But we're gonna go with the defaults and go down and press enter. And this will go through the process of installing everything. And like I stated, it will extract the official KVM Home Assistant OS image and then get the virtual machine set up for you. Now this part might take a minute, so Go to and grab you a coffee or something and just hang out for a second. But when you see the completed successfully message, you've just installed Home Assistant on Proxmox. 
I'm telling you, it's like magic, but with less one waving and more Linux command line goodness. So the installation is complete. It actually didn't take too long. I haven't installed a full blown virtual machine. I've only installed the LXC version or the container version that you can use on your system. But as you can see over here on the left hand side, it creates that home assistant. Uh, 13.1 virtual machine. So if we click on there right fast and actually let me go back to summary, but let's click right here and boom, there is our virtual machine. It's up and running right now. And all you have to do is go to the IP address of this server. Now I can click on console right fast. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. So if you look up in here, it'll go down and pull your IP address for you. So this is our IP address of the server. So it's 124 and this is the home assistant command line interface you can interact with the server from, but we're going to use the site for it. So all you have to do is go to this IP address 10.10.0.123 and then port 8123, press enter. And there we go. So preparing home assistant, this may take 20 minutes or more. And basically all you have to do is wait around for home assistant to fully come up and while we wait for it to finish i just wanted to go in and show you guys a little bit more of the virtual machine so if we go under summary we can see that it has two cpu cores it has four gigabits of memory 32 gigabyte drive and then also you can look at the ip right there as well and just to check out a little bit of the hardware we can look in here it's using default display machine vert.io scuzzy for the scuzzy controller and just bringing all that down for you so you guys can see at least the hardware and the rest of it is just like your default settings that you typically use however you set up your virtual machines on your system but it's super cool we got it up in minutes now let's switch back over and wait all right so home assistant is set up so First thing is to set up an account. So I'm gonna just name it Cupid Techie and username is fine. And then give it a strong password, put that in twice and then create your account. And then you put in your location. It acts as for your address, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just put San Diego in there, California. Let's see if it actually finds it. Yeah, San Diego, California. So let's click that and then hit next. And then this will ask you if you wanna share, you know, information with home assistant so they can make home assistant better and this data is anonymous but since i'm just using it temporarily i'm not gonna select anything but we found compatible devices it basically selected or found things on our network already so android tv remotes you know google chromecast ecobee home kit devices internet printing protocol synology like i told you guys i got a synology drive i'm gonna hit finish and this will get everything set up for us. At least, and if you guys didn't know, Home Assistant uses the YAML syntax for pretty much all its configurations, but most of the integration can be configured through the UI. But there are some integrations that require you to edit the configuration YAML file, which you can find within the operating system or the OS. So let's talk about why this is so dope. I mean, first off, the Proxmox VE helper script makes the whole process so much easier. And if you've ever tried to set up Home Assistant manually, you know it can be a bit of a headache, especially on Proxmox. It's super simple for a Raspberry Pi. All you have to do is write the image to a SD card and then plug it in and turn on the Raspberry Pi. But when you're using a hypervisor uh, like Proxmox, this makes it super easy. And these scripts are like using a cheat code. And you know what? There's no shame in using a cheat code every now and then, especially when it saves you time and sanity. And the ability to customize the setup is also a huge plus. You get to tailor the virtual machine to your needs without diving too deep into the nitty gritty. But here's the thing, this isn't just about making life easier, it's about giving you the power to control your home automation from start to finish. When you know exactly what's going into your virtual machine, you have a better grasp of your entire tech stack. And that's what I love about it. It's not just plug and play, it's more like plug, play, tweet to your heart's content. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope this guide helps you get your home assistant set up running smoothly on Proxmox. Remember, automation is all about making your life easier. And if you find this video helpful, do me a solid and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And drop a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's something you want me to cover next. Also, don't forget to check out the Proxmox VE helper scripts. They've got a ton of other tools that can make your life in Proxmox way easier. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and of course, keep it tech. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because 
yeah a lot of people get into the you know tech field because you can make a good amount of money the money is the motivator but you also in my opinion in order for you to be happy you gotta like what you're doing you know what i'm saying and so like for me a lot of times it doesn't feel like work bro most times it really doesn't feel like work it's it's yeah i'm doing something fun i'm doing something i love to do you know what i'm saying so that's what makes it you know great for me